Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles. I am here by myself today. So you only are getting me for this video. I'm sorry about that, but Neon is off doing other things. So it is just me today. And we're gonna talk about this Hollywood Reporter Brain Trust article going, if other executives troll critics like Casey Bloys did. Now Casey Bloys is the HBO guy that got caught using his employees to make up fake accounts to go after critics and people on, on Twitter and Deadline and stuff like that. And the Hollywood Reporter was one of their critics, so they called him out first. Well, welcome to the party because I'm pretty sure this is already happening from a lot of places anyway. All right, pretty sure it's been going on. So before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe. If you do, I will give you a woohoo. Woo -hoo. Um, I also want to point out that we have 10 days left on the Shadowbinders Volume 3 pre-order. We are 19 away from the 500 goal we set on the shopclownfish.com page. You can go there to back it. It's Volume 3. It is the first new content we've done on the Shadowbinders, that was originally a webcomic, in 10 years. It is going to be coming out next year because we want to leave a lot of time to make sure that we don't have another issue like with a publisher or the printer last time where they didn't get stuff to us until like months after the fact. You can still get some volume ones and twos there as well. So please check that out. And we'll go back to this. So this article is actually really short, but it's funny to me because basically it says after the HBO chief conceded using fake Twitter accounts to vent frustrations, an intrepid columnist imagines how Bob Iger, Jeff Bezos would do the same. So basically it takes the idea of what happened and they're like, but what if other ones did? And they make up their own tweets about it because this guy made tweets. We talked about another video. It was the HBO, one of the HBO guys. He was uh, on there and basically he didn't like it when people didn't like his stuff. So when stuff came out and it didn't get reviewed well by critics, they, he had people that worked with him go out and make fake accounts on places like Twitter or Deadline or whatever. He would use these accounts to call out people who were critical of the shows or him at HBO. And it got brought up in a lawsuit because somebody who was being used to do this is suing them and it got mentioned. So Rolling Stone revealed that six tweets mocking TV critics who were negative, negatively review HBO shows were actually composed at the direction of Mac CEO Casey Bloys under fake names. Most are posted by the account Kelly SH 33889356, which should have been your first indication that there is something wrong. And it was a blonde mom Texan herbalist. Yeah, the whole thing was like, you know, oh, holistic, whatever, you know. But this person is supposed to be watching all these shows and calling out the critics. And it was actually this guy putting people up to doing it. And the argument is, well, you know, what if other people did it? I'm sure they do. We've been saying for a long time that they do. We know that they do. Studios do this all the time. So this, this doesn't this lend credence to the idea that if people are review bombing Rotten Tomatoes and you're claiming that they are review bombing it because they're toxic men, wouldn't it also stand to reason that the studios would have a bunch of people out there with fake accounts that suddenly just put their first review up ever uh, or have reviews for only movies coming out from that studio? Uh, giving it great scores to inflate the score? Wouldn't that just make sense? When you get these random counts with all these numbers after it, that's like in lockstep saying the same thing about how great a movie is or a show is or calling people out because they didn't like it or they did a video they didn't like or going to their comments and saying the same thing over and over. Wouldn't it stand to reason that some of those are likely studios with fake accounts? And you can't argue that it's impossible because we already have seen that it is indeed possible. So I think this is what happens a lot. This is why when they have sellout ticket sales for all these theaters for Captain Marvel the first time, then you go to the theaters, and there's pictures of empty theaters. Maybe there's a reason. Could it be that some of the theaters were misrepresented? Yes. Could it also be that theaters were empty because the studios bought their own tickets? Yes. We know for a fact with comic books that there were different places like, oh, we sold out of the first run, but they bought their own damn books. We have people that worked at these companies that have come and told us this, that they bought their own books. So it looked like it was selling out and popular so that it got listed as like a high selling book and then it would sell more, actually sell books. People thought, you know, oh, FOMO, I don't know, everybody's buying this, I have to buy it too. And then all the books would end up at Ollie's. Star Wars toys. Oh look, Star Wars toys are just being bought up right and left or off the shelves, but yet cases of them are showing up at Ollie's. 
Um, an example, another thing, yeah, oh, Star Wars, everybody loves Star Wars, everyone, I mean, they love Leia and her Lola droid, that's why the $90 Lola droid is being sold as a Black Friday special at Walmart for $15, because the truth is nobody wanted it, even if you tried to make it sound like they did, and that's what these people do, they make up fake accounts, it's the sock puppet mentality that Twitter has, that's why when Elon Musk bought it, he went, he's like, wait, it's not worth as much as I thought, because a lot of these accounts are fake, no shit, They've been doing this since social media started. There's whole places you could you could literally pay to go do whatever you want. To go, you know, go you know, find critics and, and call them out, to, you know, give you praise, to artificially give you higher numbers, to give you artificial interaction. You could do this. I used to do numbers for our other blog that we had the Disney another Disney blog. And when I would, I would find that across the board, like Disney and some other studios and stuff, they'd have some of the people that are the same people that would follow them. But when you go to look at their accounts, all they did in their account, they never posted anything of their own. All they did was retweet what they put up to try to boost it to their to the followers. Or if they did post something on their own, it was it, it, some comment they, that was probably paid for to give glowing praise to this and then a bunch of retweets of the same thing over and over again because you could hire these places to do it that's why there's so much so many fake accounts on twitter because it's a lot of sock puppets a lot of fake accounts that are used for marketing that's what it is why have a marketing budget they pay for this shit they pay people to go out and harass people they pay people to go out and you know like grass try to grassroots stuff you know good and bad they've been doing it just that you couldn't, you know, it wasn't always provable. It was debatably, you know, happening before. But now we have proof that it was happening. It was one example. But do you think for one minute that's the only example? I don't think so. And the Hollywood Report doesn't think it either. But they do come down here and say that, um, but are all the studio heads likely getting their assistants to do the same thing? Yes. Yes, we've all been saying it for a long time. I scoured Twitter, but I gave up and lazily made up tweets I suspected came from other CEOs. Well, unless you have a, a, a you know, like a person that was, like, that's suing you and bringing all the proof, you're not going to be able to tell. I mean, you could guess by the weird names that are like blonde Texas mom who's an herbalist and the numbers. You can usually guess from that, but you can't always tell. So short of having the, you know, smoking gun being reveal, unveil, unveiled for all these people, can't speak today unveiled for all these people you're not going to see it you're not going to see it directly you can make you can guess you can pretty much tell usually i mean when there's like a lock set the same like robotic comment over and over and over again especially if it's focusing on some small minute area of something that one or two people might notice but not like dozens then it's most likely not true i just i don't know why they're surprised by this so they made up some of these fake these fake tweets and said it would, oh, this is would be, this was this person, but it was actually David Zaslav, or it was that person, but it was actually Bob Iger. I mean, this is dumb. They're just making up tweets at this point, which is stupid. Like, I need an article, give me views, here's some fake tweets. But the idea still stands, which is studio heads are likely getting their assistants to do this, because they probably are. I mean, it would be, which one, which one sounds more plausible? That studios never do this ever when their movie is failing and they have to do whatever they can to make it look better than it was for investors and for to try to get people to come to see the movie or that they don't do ever, anything ever? Which one makes more sense? You know, they go to all the trouble for marketing budgets. You don't think some of the marketing budget goes to this kind of stuff? And then some of these people personally are so, so thin-skinned that they wouldn't actually send people out? I don't think, I don't know if Zaz, well, Zaz love, you know, would have people underneath him do it. But I mean... He seems like he's like, fuck you, I don't care. Bob Iger, I guarantee you Disney does this. I have no doubt about that. I've seen stuff. Ted Sarandos, I don't know. Bezos, who the hell knows? These other people, they probably do though. They, they don't, usually who it is isn't even the people that are in charge the whole way. It's usually some of the underlings that are like in charge of something else under them or middle management. I've always found that to be the case. It's usually one of those people um, who are so worried about not getting to move up the ladder that unless they have positive returns, that they do this more often. I don't know if the CEOs actually themselves usually bother, except for this guy who was a dumbass. Usually, I don't know if they do, but I, I will be sure if showrunners do. I, oh, I saw it all the time with She-Ra. Their whole marketing, the whole marketing for the new She-Ra show was basically from day one to piss on the fans and call them names. And then all these accounts would just randomly show up. So either they got people to do it for them by telling them they were they were helping the show. I know there's been discords 
where about talking about us or other YouTubers where they try to get people to go under the, under the, the promise that they might get a cookie. They might get, they might get a chance at something to go and harass us. There are discords. I've seen the images. There are, that they're talking about harassing YouTubers that's going and put negative comments or going and smearing them on Reddit or on whatever, because, you know, we want to, you know, try to like discredit them because, you know, we'll get something for it if we do. If you're a real fan, you'll do that. I know this happens. I've seen it. I don't know. I just think it's funny that the Hollywood Reporter is like, oh, but what if other people do it? You can't be that stupid. Everybody knows they do it. Anyway. That's my video for today. It would have been more fun with Neon, but he's not here. So it was just me. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.